Hey you, what up? Welcome to my channel. Welcome back. I'm Mariam. It is 2022 and happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. I am very excited for this brand new year. I'm excited for this first video of the new year. And as you would have already guessed, it is your favorite video of the year. Best makeup of 2021. I love this video. I love putting it together for you. I love going down the list of items and instead of just telling you why these products are my favorite, I like to apply them on to show you why they are my favorite. So without further ado, let's get into this video, best product of 2021 in the makeup category. But before we even go on, you already know the drill. Subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and hit that notification bell so you can watch all of my Wednesdays and Sundays video. But it is a brand new year, so perhaps there may be a Friday video? Just saying. Anyway, let's get into this best makeup of 2021 video. Three, two, one, here we go. I am going to go in the order in which I apply these products to my face. I'm also going to be mentioning some honorable mentions from years past or products that are my all-time faves that I still use. I think this is something that will add a little bit more value to a video like this because quite frankly, I don't have a favorite product for every single category for the year of 2021 because let's face it, it wasn't the best year ever. Literally, it also wasn't the best year for makeup, but I'm not giving too much away. Let's just go ahead and get started with the first product on my faves list. And this product is actually in partnership with one of my favorite brands, Josie Marin. I am talking about my favorite Josie Marin Argan Daily Moisturizer SPF 47. Protect and Perfect is what it's called. It comes in two shades. Well, one that actually has a tint, like a warm tint, and another one that is transparent that has no shade. And basically, this is a product that I was reaching for all summer long, and even into the fall months. This is something that has been my go-to. You have seen me talk about this in my videos. You have seen me use this on my IG stories every time I was at the beach. Basically, this is an Argan Daily Moisturizer with super high SPF, SPF 47. At $36, I feel like this is a really, really reasonable price for 60 milliliters or two fluid ounces. I feel like that is a lot more affordable than some of its competitors. And the fact that it has a tinted version is something nice. It's an option to give you that flawless canvas as well as protection from the harmful UVA, UVB rays. What else? This product is clean at Sephora. I'm gonna pop up what that actually means, but basically this is reef safe. So that actually gives me a sense of satisfaction. That gives me a sense of ease, knowing that when I'm wearing this, this is also safe for the environment, so that just makes me feel good. And it's just such a great product, great for my oily AF skin, as well as for dry skin, normal skin. It absorbs really quickly into your skin while keeping you safe from the sun. Another noteworthy mention is that Argan oil is non-comedogenic, so it's safe to use for acne prone skin, for sensitive skin. This is like the one that you should go for if you are questioning whether something is not right for you. This is right for you no matter your skin type. Anyway, I am happy to be partnering with Josie Marin on this little tidbit because I really truly love and swear by this product. I love how perfecting this product is. It just smooths down the pores, it absorbs super quickly, it just makes your skin look better healthier, and with the tinted version, you don't even need to apply much else on top, especially if your skin is on the good side, like mine is right now. And also the tint is very sheer, so it's suitable for most skin tones. It's not gonna leave a white cast, it's very universal, and I love it, it looks so damn good. This year, I am still using and still reaching for my Essence My Skin Perfector Tinted Primer. This is actually a favorite product of 2020, but I'm still reaching for it because it's such an amazing, pore filling, skin perfecting product. Also, it's such a great price of like six bucks. And then another one that I've been reaching for lately, and it's more of like an all time fave, is the YSL Touche Clot Skin Blur Primer. This one is pricey, it's like in the $50 range, more like 57, but a little bit does go a long way, but with a product that is so nice and luxurious and so skin perfecting, you almost don't wanna use it sparingly. It's one of those products that you wanna reach for every time you wear makeup, just because it makes such a difference. I've even heard some of you guys mention in the comment section of my videos that you see a difference in my skin before and after this product. So this is an all-time fave. This is a fave for 2020, and I actually don't have one for 
2021. I keep reaching and using these. But today, because I just applied the Josie Marin sunscreen moisturizer, I feel like it's another one of those skin perfecting, skin smoothing products that also can be used as a primer. I'm actually gonna skip primer for today and I'm gonna move on to the brows because the brow category is a personal one for me, you know, it's very hard for me to find brow products that I like because I'm very picky and very particular about brows. But this year I did have some faves. The number one fave being the Makeup by Mario Master Hold Brow Gel. Yes, I'm still reaching for my benefit 24 hour brow setter, but this is a new product for 2021. I've discovered it and I love it. It's a super gripping gel that allows unruly brows like mine that are a little bit on the coarser side to actually be glued down. So this gives me the flexibility, this gives me the power to really control my brows. So that's why I love it. With this product, you can also create any brow shape that you like, whether it's bushy, feathery, or super clean, you can do anything with it. Lately, I've been doing a little bit of both, like a little bushy and feathery in this section, and then just a little bit more tamed and glued down in the tails. I'm actually running out. I really, really need to order another one. Another brow gel product that I love a lot is NYX The Brow Glue. This one is in collab with Netflix Sex Education, but basically it's the same brow styler, the brow glue. This one doesn't glue down the brow hairs as well as the Mario product, but it is able to give you that super defined bushy brow look. And when I say defined, meaning that you could really define every single hair cluster of your brow, you know, so that's what makes it kind of cool. Another product that I've been loving for the brows is the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Pen. I've been using the shade black and also the shade espresso nonstop, probably all year long. And it's just such an amazing micro brow pen that can be almost undetectable once you really get the hang of it. But this is great for filling in the brow, using the hair stroke technique. So let's say you're missing some brow hairs in some areas and you don't wanna fill them in with a pencil, which will give you like a more block brow look. This is the product that will not give you block brows, but it will effortlessly and very easily fill in your brow if you're looking for like a natural technique. So this is the technique that I typically go for because I already have pretty full brows. They're also very dark, but they're not perfect. So I definitely need to perfect them a little bit. I definitely need to add some strokes here and there. So for me, this is the ideal product to use. Now, obviously not everyone can use a product or technique like this. If you have very fine eyebrows, if they're very light, basically if you need a lot of help in the eyebrow department, you're probably someone who would get more use out of a brow pencil or like a pomade or something a little bit more pigmented and a little bit thicker basically. For that, I would highly recommend the new Lime Crime Bushy Brow Pencil. Really, really good, super soft and pigmented, blends out like a dream, and it's not super waxy, which I don't really know who that waxy brow pencil consistency is really made for because it doesn't really work on super fine brows. It doesn't really work on full brows. It doesn't work on coarse brows. It doesn't really work on anyone. It just makes the brows look weird. But if you're looking for just a thick, nice, rich pencil that is quick and easy, the Lime Crime one is it. If you're looking for a pencil that's a little bit on the micro fine side, I highly recommend the Huda Beauty Bomb Brows Micro Shade Brow Pencil. This is another favorite of mine, even though I'm not a pencil girl, but when I do go for a pencil, this is the one that I use. Super, super nice, super sturdy, even though it is the finest looking brow pencil I have ever seen in my life, but it won't break. All right, so enough about brows. Let's go back to the skin and let's talk about foundation. I actually do have a best of foundations video for 2021, and I have, have two videos, one that I completed in the middle of the year, kind of like ranking down all the foundations that came out in 2021. So you could watch that one for like the faves and fails of the year, or you can just watch the best of, which I'll link down below, and it'll give you like a more informed, like a better curated video on just my favorite foundations. For today, I'll just mention a couple and also some honorary mentions from years prior. I'm still reaching for my Dior foundations, the Forever and the Face and Body. I love those so much. I'm still reaching for my Bobbi Brown liquid to powder foundation. That is just like a summertime staple. I love that one. But this year I did discover 
the Bobbi Brown Skin Long Wear Weightless Foundation with SPF 15. I find that this is just a little bit better suited for the colder weather months, so I've been reaching for this one a lot lately. It's very lightweight, but it gives great coverage. In the full coverage category, I love the Catrice True Skin Hydrating Foundation. This is long lasting, long wearing, feels like a luxe foundation at $11. More on that in my foundations video. And another fave this year was the Lawless Conceal the Deal Clean AF full coverage foundation that I would classify as a medium coverage foundation, not a full, but it is buildable. In the light to medium coverage, I am loving the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream. This is SPF 30. This has been my go-to all year round, especially in the summertime, just because it's a one and done. It looks so good without a primer doesn't really even need to be set. It's just like a genius, genius product. Light coverage for those good skin days or for the summertime. Something similar to that, but with a little bit more full coverage is the Fenty Ease Drop. This has been another fave, another product that I've been reaching for a lot throughout the year. Has more coverage than this, but less coverage than this, but still closer to like a foundation coverage than a tinted moisturizer. Anyway, today I'm gonna go for the Lawless Conceal the Deal in the shade Palo Santo. Oh man, I love this one because it is just so skin perfecting, so easy, non-streaky, doesn't cling on to patches, long lasting, super perfecting. Basically it does what a foundation is supposed to do. It makes you look better than before, it covers your imperfections, but it does not magnify or maximize your texture. It's very pore friendly, which is a concern of mine because I am very oily skin and enlarged pores is just like a common feature of people with oily skin. Okay, moving right along to the concealer category. And I have to say this product in the concealer category is probably my favorite product of the year. And I am talking about the Fenty Bright Fix Under Eye Brightener. I have been loving this product since the day that it came out. I actually did a campaign with Fenty for this product and I was just so ecstatic. I was so excited about it. I couldn't talk about it for a couple of months before it actually came out because I was in the testing phase, but I've known about this product for a little bit longer than, than most people. So I really got a chance to fall in love with this one. The reason why I love it is because it is so super lightweight. It definitely brightens the under eye, but it does this in such an effortless, undetectable way that for someone like myself who doesn't really suffer from super dark circles or like a very pronounced under eye, this is just an ideal product for me. It's kind of like the weightless sister of the Tarte Shape Tape. Like it covers everything, it absolutely brightens. It almost has like a lifting effect. I even like to use it around my nose, which is where I have like some deeper crevices. I like to use it in between my brows, which is where I frown. But this has been my go-to all year long. It just immediately makes your face look better brighter, more awake, more lifted, you know, makes your skin look more perfect. I can like just go on and on raving about this product. The shade that I use is Melon 06. I use 08, which is like deep melon in the summertime, but 06 is perfect for my current skin tone. Also, this product doesn't really crease. It is long lasting. It's just so good. It's so good. It makes me emotional, honestly. Oh, I got more concealers to talk about. Hold on. This is my favorite concealer for the under eye, like literally for brightening and for like lifting this area. But I do have a favorite concealer for spots and it is actually the Lancome Tant Adol Ultra Wear all over concealer. Now when they say all over concealer, they don't mean literally all over your face as a foundation. What they mean is that this is a concealer that you can use under your eyes if you want to, or you could use this as a spot concealer all over the face. So that's what I'm gonna do with this guy. Just like a little bit of concealing here and there, on like a couple of breakouts that I have here, like a couple of acne scars that I have. I find that this concealer is so good that if you get a shade that is very close to your skin tone, you can probably skip foundation. I actually did do a separate review for this product. Matter of fact, I'll link that video down below so you can check it out because the wear test and just like my check-ins throughout the day look like I'm wearing a full face of foundation, but I'm not. It's literally just like a few dots of this covering my imperfections, like literally such a amazing skin-like product. But the key here is that it really has to match your skin. It can't be too much lighter or too much darker. Like right now I'm using a shade that is a pinch light for me because I have it here in this tray from my previous video for my uh, Makeup for Real Life New Year's Eve edition where I was showing how to conceal the bumps that are caused by acne. It was like a magic trick makeup tip that I was 
uh, showing. But right now that I don't have any bumps, I wouldn't actually use this shade 250 to conceal spots. For spots, you literally need something that is the exact same shade as your skin. But anyway, of course I'm gonna make it work. What else? I will say I do have like an honorable mention. I do like the Kosas concealer that came out earlier in the year. It's very creamy, it offers very good coverage, but my only issue with that product is that it does crease a little bit throughout the day. So it's not as flexible as my Bright Fix, and it's not like a product that I would necessarily wear all over the face because it's a little too heavy, heavier than this Lancome product, which is very skin-like. But it is still a very nice product, though not as great as these two. But the reason why I'm even mentioning that is because everyone is different, you know, and everyone has different preferences. So even something that I find to be in the good category could be someone else's great category, you know? Keep that in mind. Okay, for powder, I am still using my one size translucent setting powder. I actually just ran out of the travel size, so now I'm reaching for the big guy. This is actually a fave from 2020, but I'm still reaching for it because I haven't found anything better in the translucent powder category. This has just been my go-to. It is so skin perfecting it's very smoothing on the pores it's great for setting the under eye it's a very flexible powder and I've said this in previous videos and I'll say it again this one size powder which was created by Patrick Starr a man who wears makeup and this is something that Patrick has stated so I'll just like rephrase what he has said this powder is so smoothing that it actually smooths down the stubble that grows on Patrick's face his facial hair so if you think about it when something is as smoothing as that. Imagine what it can do for those of us who don't grow facial hair. Think about that. So I will definitely say that this is a powder that is probably the most smoothing that I have ever tried. And now there's actually um, a number of powders that have this really um, instant gratification effect where you can really see it smoothing down your skin, but the effect does not last. This powder lasts all day. It doesn't make you look cakey or fakey. And it's something that I'm gonna continue using in 2022. Of course, I'm still reaching for my Charlotte T Airbrush Flawless Finish, which I think was actually the inspo for the translucent powder from one size, but this is in pressed powder form. I still love it. I still reach for it. I still hit pan all the time. I repurchase it, even though the brand sends me PR and they know that I love that product, but I'm just like addicted to it. I love it. Another fave in the pressed powder category has been the Bare Minerals Original Mineral Veil, but in the pressed powder format. So this is something that came out this year, last year in 2021. This has been my summertime go-to. This is great with something like like the Josie Marin Moisturizer SPF 47 or with my beloved Complexion Rescue. This is just like a great pair. Weightless, undetectable on the skin, but definitely sets your makeup and absorbs any oil. So that's just like super great. And I think the shade Sheer Medium is always sold out. So if you can get your hands on it, please get your hands on it. I'll try to find it. And uh, if I do, I will list and link it down below as with all the products that I'm mentioning. Actually, I'm gonna use it right now. Why not give this one some love? Cat hair. This brush is the It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe French Boutique Blush Brush in number four. I like it as a powder brush because it's very big and fluffy. I just like to press the powder in like that. In my notes here, I also wrote down that I really did like the Makeup Forever Matte Translucent Powder. That one is a really good one, but it definitely gives you that mattified, glamorous kind of look. And another mention in the pressed powder category is the LYS powder. I really do like that one. It is very perfecting. Similar to the Charlotte T, though not as smoothing, but still a really, really good bet. And clean at Sephora. Moving on to blush. Okay, I have a lot of blush favorites this year, which is surprising because I'm not typically like a blush girl, but I guess this year I became a blush girl. And this year I actually have a favorite blush in every single category of blushes. So in the liquid blush category this year, or in 2021, my favorite blush has been the Natasha Denona Puff Paint Liquid Blush. This one is so, so stunning. It's actually more like a serum than a liquid. The colors are just delicious. Delicious, just like so juicy and so beautifying, you know, exactly what blush is meant to be. The shade here, I actually don't know the shade name, but basically this like coral peachy one has been my go-to all summer long. It's so pretty, it's so fresh, it's very flexible. You can put it on top of your foundation, on top of your bare face, or even on top of powder. It actually comes in three shades. This one is another shade that I've been using a lot, kind of just like a nudie everyday, like brightening type of color for the face. In the cream blush category, I loved the 
Jaclyn Cosmetics Cream to Powder Blush Sticks. These were really, really nice, you guys. Again, flexible formulas, cream to powder, so something that's really smart and really good for oily skin, like mine. Another summertime fave. I haven't really reached for it too much in the fall or in the winter season, but it's something that I did reach for a lot in the summer. The shade that I love the most is Swoon. It's just like this really beautiful, bright, orangey peach. Love this one. In the powder category, but I actually have two powder categories. I have like a mousse powder category. Basically, I'm talking about the Huda Beauty Glowish Blush. This one is unique because although it looks like a powder, it doesn't really feel like a powder. It's just a little bit softer, so it has like a creamy finish. So it's just like a beautiful blush that makes you look like you're blushing from within. It looks very natural. The colors, the shades are just stunning. And I've been reaching for this probably the most this year. So it has been definitely a fave. And then in the powder category, in like the traditional powder category, I've been loving the Makeup by Mario Soft Pop Powder Blush. This shade here has been my go-to, poppy pink. It just brightens the complexion, makes you look youthful and glowy. It's very easy to use. I find that powder blushes are the easiest to use for me. So this is the one that I've been reaching for lately. Mm. One more that I forgot to mention, Pixi On The Glow Blush Stick. This one is super unique. First of all, the packaging is really, really cute. It looks like deodorant. It rolls out like a deodorant. There's a lot of product in here. There's three shades, basically. This is a product that went viral on TikTok and it went viral for a reason because it's just such a great, great product. It is made in Korea. It goes on like a bomb, but it gives you a really beautiful, really luminous, dewy finish that also surprisingly works with with oily skin like mine. So I have been loving this one. The shade that I usually use is a coral one that I couldn't really find, but this one's really pretty as well. I actually did wanna mention two blush palettes that I've been loving, and they're both in the powder blush category. Number one is the Laura Lee Los Angeles. Oh, I showed you the back of the palette. The back of the palette looks so chic, okay. This is the front of the palette. Laura Lee Los Angeles Blush Aesthetic Blush Palette. Eight universal shades. We've got some pops of orange, some pops of pink, as well as some muted tones, as well as a highlighter. Peachy shades, pinky shades, basically everything that you need from a blush palette is in this palette. And I also really loved Jaclyn's Rouge Romance Blush Palette. This is the pink one, but there's also a coral. I like both of them, and I think both of them have just been outstanding for me. Let's go for the Jaclyn Rouge Romance. I'm gonna go for this kind of muted shade here called Admirer. I'm just gonna sweep this up like that. And like that. And then of course, a little bit across the nose because we've been seeing that trend a lot lately. Ooh, I think I added a little too much. Let me blur that down. Lots of good things in the blush category for 2021. Although I will say I am still reaching for my Fancy Beauty Cream Blushes. Those were the best of 2020 and they are just still so damn good and so damn popping. All right, moving on to bronzers. In the bronzer category this year, I really loved the Huda Beauty Glowish Bronzers. Similar to the blushes, this gives like a bronze from within, a very natural dewy look that I think a lot of us are just more into this year. We don't want like a super sculpted, obvious bronze look that looks very fake. We want something that looks natural. And out of the bronzers, I would say this is probably the most effective, the most noticeable, but natural looking bronzer. I love the fact that it's a swirl. I love that it's a little bit cushiony. So it gives like a slight dewy finish. The colors are just right. They're believable, not orangey. So if you're looking for something good, this is the one to get. The brush that I'm using here is the Wayne Goss number 12 brush. A lot of people always ask me about this brush. Unfortunately, it is very hard to find, but it is one of my favorite bronzer brushes. But again, like I said, if I find it, I will link it. It gives you such a healthy radiance, you know? In the cream category, however, I will mention that I have been loving the Persona Cosmetics cream bronzers, specifically this one in the shade Dune, which is a very believable olive shade. And olive undertone is what resembles a natural tan to me. Okay, let's talk about highlighters. Really, there's only three highlighters that I like this year that I have been reaching for. Number one is the Jaclyn Cosmetics Putty Highlighter in Star Power. This one has that cushiony feel, so it's like a little bit creamier. Jaclyn Cosmetics actually has another set of highlighters that are more on the drier side, but this is the one that I like more. I feel like it gives you that very glassy skin effect. 
I like this one a lot. Number two, and probably the one that I reached for the most this year has been the LYS Beauty Aim High Pressed highlighter in the shade Brave, which is a champagne shade. And it is just so, so gorgeous. It gives you the most magnificent glow, but it doesn't settle into fine lines. It doesn't highlight your like little crevices or like little wrinkles or lines. Basically, it doesn't make your skin look worse. So that's a big plus for me. And another highlighter that I almost forgot about, but it's something that I think is really good, is actually from REM Beauty or REM Beauty by Ariana Grande, the highlighter topper in the shade Miss Mercury. This one I found to be really skin perfecting, but also blinding, like a super blinding, like 2017, 2018 type of highlighter, but in a much finer, in a much more modern, like luminous version. So this is the one that I'm gonna use today. This one just gives this beautiful, like wet skin finish, very glassy, very bright, but also just like super fine. I don't know, I feel like a lot of people were expecting more from REM Beauty or from REM Beauty, but I don't know. I feel like I'm excited for this brand and I think they have a lot more cool things coming. All right, speaking of celebrity beauty brands, I actually have a favorite eyeshadow primer for 2021. And yes, I'm still using my Fenty Beauty Primer, which is also a celebrity beauty line, Rihanna's Fenty. But in 2021, I discovered the Rare Beauty Eyeshadow Primer. And although this is not as solid as my Fenty Beauty Primer, this one I like for a very specific reason. And the reason being that it is very smoothing on textured lids. So I didn't even know that I had textured lids until I tried this primer and until I noticed how smooth my lids looked afterwards. So this is something that I like to use whenever I wear cream shadows as opposed to powder shadows. I just find that cream shadows are a little bit more texture enhancing, so you need a little bit more texture smoothing underneath. And this has been my go-to primer for that. Also, I'm gonna be very honest with you guys, as always. I don't think that this is a primer that will prevent your oils from seeping through, especially if you have oily lids like me. I can't say Say that this is like a universally great primer for everyone, but because liquid and cream shadows tend to be a little bit more waterproof than say powder shadows, I find that it works well with those types of eyeshadows. But it's not necessarily something that I would use for like a very glam powder shadow look. For that, I'm still gonna use my go-to, my all-time fave, the Fenty Beauty Eyeshadow Primer. But anyway, speaking of the eye category and eyeshadow palettes, I do have a whole separate video on the best eyeshadow palettes of 2021, and I will link it below, so you should definitely check it out. Some of my favorites have been the Danessa Myricks Lightworks 3 palette. That one is just so beautiful and so unique. I also really love the Huda Beauty Beauty Rose Quartz palette, just like another great addition to Huda's eyeshadow family. Basically, there's a lot of eyeshadow palettes that I like, and I try to choose one for every category, like one for every day, for neutral, one for like a pop of color. And today, I'm not going to be reaching for any of those pressed powder shadow palettes because I actually wanna talk about the best cream shadow products for the year, which to me were clearly and single-handedly the Laura Mercier Rose Collection eyeshadow crayons. These have been so nice and just like so easy to work with, especially for quick makeup days for just like a one and done. So I've gathered up just like a few colors here. I'm gonna do just like a very quick and easy look to show you how great this is, how versatile it is. The shade that I'm using here is Rose Thorn, which is like a maroon brown with some flecks of shimmer. Just applying that to the outer edge of my eye socket. And then I'm gonna use this Rare Beauty eyeshadow brush that you could also use for concealer. I'm just gonna buff that out. Actually, Rare Beauty came out with some liquid eyeshadows as well, and those I really do like a lot. Camera just cut off, but I asked Swatch Model to zoom in a little bit so we can see the eyes better. And basically, I'm just gonna add a little bit more color. Oh, and I also completed this eye off camera. But what I love about these Laura Mercier crayons is just how easy they are to use. You can blend them out with your finger if you want. You could use them as bases for your powder eyeshadows or for pigments. You could use them as liners. 
in case you want an intense pop of color. And the colors in this collection are so beautiful. I'm not even into like rosy tones like that, but these rosy tones are very interesting and unique in my opinion. And now you got yourself like a little baby smoky eye. In the liquid eyeshadow category, I've also been reaching for this lip bar liquid eyeshadow a lot, especially this shade here called Girl Next Door. So now this is a glitter shadow that kind of at first reminds you of the Pixie Liquid Fairy Lights or the Stila, but it is a little bit different because it has a bit more of a color base and the glitters are a lot finer. So I wouldn't call this a glitter shadow. I would call this just like a sparkly eyeshadow. So you can apply this all over your lid, blend it out, and or you can just apply a little bit to the center to intensify it. I actually wore this eyeshadow for New Year's. I believe I also wore it for Christmas and for Thanksgiving. That's how much I love it. And I actually started wearing it on my birthday. So I also wore it for my birthday. Literally every single major holiday or event in my life, I wore this shadow. That's how much I love it. Again, not sure if it's available at the moment or if it's sold out, but I'm gonna try to find it so you can get it too. Next thing I'm gonna do is reach for my favorite lash curler of all time. It's the Laura Mercier one. I've tried others. I still like this one the best. I'm gonna curl my lashes just once on the top and then a few times on the bottom. We are sliding into the lashes category, so mascaras and false lashes. In the mascara category, I really only loved two mascaras, possibly three. Number one being the Wet n Wild Big Papa Mascara. This is just really great formula, especially if you have shorter lashes. This definitely gives you the volume, this gives you the length. It blackens, it darkens, it defines, it does everything. So this is kind of like my go-to formula when I want it all. I also found myself reaching for the Essence slash princess waterproof mascara a lot, but this one is a little bit more defining. Like let's say you want your ends to look super long and defined. This is the formula that I would go to for that. Recently, I also discovered the Heroin Make waterproof fiber mascara. That one's great if you want to lengthen your lashes, if you want to add fibers, or if you want to like clump your lashes for that retro look. I've been using that one a lot too. That's pretty much it. I did like the Patrick Ta and the Rare Beauty mascaras, but for the price point, it just doesn't make that much of a difference to me and in fact I like these formulas a little bit more because they offer a bit more for my very short very straight Asian lashes I'm actually not going to apply any mascara to my top lashes because I have something else that I'm so excited to share and talk about if you've been following me on the gram, if you watch my stories, then you probably can already tell. One of my absolute favorite discoveries for 2021 and another one of those products that I think is like top three best products of the year is the Kiss Fall Scare Kit. This is incredible and it is like a game changer product for lashes. So basically what this kit is, is like a lash extensions at home or like a DIY lash extensions kit that you can do yourself without the help of a pro. And there's all different types of kits. There's also these multi-packs that offer different styles of lash clusters from short, medium to long. There's wispy ones, there's lengthening ones, there's different options. But today I'm just gonna go for the ones that are offered in this kit, which is the Lash Extensions Effect Special Edition Kit. And basically because this is so easy, I'm gonna show you in this video how I do it. Basically each of the kits outside of the Wispies multi-packs comes with this seal and bond adhesive, which is basically what you use to bond these clusters underneath your real lashes. So first I'm gonna add a little bit of bond to my lashes. You can start at the outer edges or in the inner corner, it doesn't really matter. But what's important here is that you don't apply too much product. If you apply too much, it becomes a little too sticky and there's just like a bit of a learning curve. But since I've already done this a number of times, I think I've gotten the hang of it and I know exactly how much to apply for my lashes. Next, you've got these tweezers here. I'm gonna start by picking up the shortest cluster. And what I find really helpful is to grab it by the tips as opposed to by the roots and then just place it right underneath the lash. And then I kind of like use my finger to just like glue it up. I use the back of the tweezer to just like stick it to my lashes. And then I move on. I'm gonna go for another short cluster, grabbing it by the tips and then placing it underneath your lash directly next to the first cluster, just like that. Next, I'm gonna grab the medium 
grab uh, the tips and it kind of just like sticks to your natural lashes it's really weird i'm gonna go for a long i'm gonna add a little bit more bond just because you know i'm talking in this video and i'm going slower than i would if i wasn't talking i'm gonna grab the long cluster next i'm gonna place that right next to the previous wisp just like that and I have like a little bit of space here left over for another one. Usually I just go for four, but today I went a little bit overboard and I started like very close to the inner corner. So I could probably fit a fifth one in there. So I'm gonna add like a pinch more bond, just like that. Grab by the tips and I'm gonna place that right in there. And honestly, that looks so pretty, so natural, like real lash extensions, but you just did it yourself. Next thing that you have to do is grab the seal component, which is clear and it kind of gets rid of the stickiness. So you want to apply that very close to the roots of these wisps and just sealing it in place. Now I'm quickly going to do this on the other eye and I'm going to speed through this without talking. All right, false gara is on and it looks amazing. I gotta say, it looks so amazing without any eye makeup on. It's something that just gives you that little extra boost of confidence because it looks so natural, like your own lashes, but so, so pretty. Now I will say there's also another product that comes in this kit that is an overnighter that you can use on top of the seal if you want your lashes to last. But in order to remove your lashes after you use the overnighter, you will need the false gara remover, which actually removes the overnighter. So keep that in mind. Okay, for my bottom lashes, I am gonna use my Essence Lash Princess Waterproof Mascara. Let's talk about the lips category. So I have several favorite products for 2021 in the lips category. I have some in the lipsticks category and also like in the balms and the tints category. So I'll start with the lipsticks. You guys probably can already tell, you can guess that my favorite lipstick for 2021 is the Makeup by Mario Ultra Suede Lipstick. This formula is a dream come true. It is so lip perfecting. It is so smoothing and hydrating and long lasting. And it basically just gives you the best Best of everything in a lipstick tube. The colors are so insanely flattering on almost anyone and everyone that it's almost hard to believe. There are 20 shades of lipsticks in the collection. When I tell you that I can probably wear almost all of them, I'm not even exaggerating. You should definitely watch my video review of those lipsticks where I try on all the colors along with the swatch model who also makes an appearance and applies some of these lipsticks onto his lips. But basically this product is incredible. It kind of reminds me of the MAC Powder Kiss formula, which is one of my favorite formulas from MAC. It gives you that very velvety, super super soft, like plush type of pout that I think is very current and very flattering. The finish is matte, it is pigmented, but it's not super duper creamy. So very easy to work with. Another favorite lipstick for the year, and this one is from the drugstore, is actually Maybelline Ulta Matte Lipsticks. Now these are super duper pigmented, also matte, very, very flattering colors, affordable, very nice sleek and chic packaging that also shows the color on the tube, which I find to be very convenient for me a little bit thicker and a little bit creamier than the makeup by Mario lipsticks but another great formula and something that I reached for a lot this year in the lip balm category and this is almost not a lip balm this is almost like a very glamorous lip balm or like say you were wearing a lipstick that is also very hydrating I am talking about the Charlotte T happy kiss balm lipsticks that look like this super duper creamy very pigmented but very comfortable on the lips I think there's about four or five shades and I love them all and another favorite also from Charlotte T was actually the tinted love lip stain or lip tint. These two shades here, Santa Euphoria and Love Chain have been my favorites. And I actually think that lip stains or lip tints are coming back. So today I'm gonna use those two. I don't actually have a new favorite lip liner. I always just go for the Laura Mercier or the NARS or the MAC or the Charlotte T. So I'm just gonna go for whatever's here, which is actually Laura Mercier Chestnut. I love the shade Santa Euphoria. It just gives you a really beautiful, natural, like medium, nudie lip stain vibe that I really like. I think it's really cool, long lasting, and just like easy. It makes you look a little bit more put together, you know? And I have one more mention, and this is kind of just like in the miscellaneous makeup category. I have really been loving this Lime Crime Freckle Pen so much in 2021. I actually like it a lot more than the Freck Freckle Pen because I think this is a lot easier to use. It comes in a jumbo fat marker type of package.
package. And also it comes in two shades, cocoa, which is a darker shade, and also amber, which is lighter. Cocoa is the shade that I like to go for because it looks a little bit more like my natural freckles. But basically, I like to just dot it on wherever. You can make your freckles as fine or as thick as you want. You can go precise or you can make them appear a little bit more blotchy. The technique is up to you, but what I really like about it is how easy it is and how great it looks. Now, obviously, after you do the freckles, you need to powder them down so they don't look too obvious. You need to blend them in with the rest of your face. I'm just gonna reach back into my Bare Minerals Original Mineral Veil in the pressed powder format, and I'm gonna seal these freckles in place. Voila, here is the final look using all of my favorite products of 2021, minus the eyeshadow palettes, because you're gonna have to go check out that video for that. Very fresh, very easy, and it's something that I don't think took me a very long time to put together, even though I was talking throughout this video, even though I had a lot of commentary on pretty much every single product. This is a look that I can easily achieve in under 20 minutes because I'm so well familiar with these products and they work for me because they are the best of the year. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Definitely take a notepad and jot down some of your faves if you haven't already. Check out the links below if you wanna purchase some of these products. And let me know what were some of your favorites for 2021. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Also let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see me attempt in 2022, perhaps another series series, perhaps another day, what would be a good day for an additional video, let me know. I am all ears. I'm very excited for this one. I'm very excited for this new year, for the new beginnings. And with that, I am going to wrap up this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Zooming on out, saying goodbye to you. You're checking out more videos of mine over here, and I will see you in the next one. Happy New Year. Mwah. Peace.